The extras required for the crowd scenes were recruited from the local residents of the many nearby towns that surround Port Merion. They were collected by coach at 7.30 each morning from outside the Port Maddock post office. There were no moans from them, although they had to go running around their little... They were very hilly lanes, and um, obviously they had to do a take several times. So they'd start at the top of a hill and run down. And they were quite elderly, a lot of them. We had uh, a lot of the locals, and a lot of locals came to watch us doing that human chess bit. And the, um, the costumes, of course, had to come up from London. That was Berman's. Um, and it, they, they all looked so good. It really was. It was a beautiful day. It was a wonderful place. And that was a pleasure to watch because chess is slow anyway. You don't expect them to sort of start hopping around. And it was a slow shoot. But the locals were so good. They really were. They, they entered into it heart and soul. And the ones that we used, because they weren't all equity, but, and they, they were all incredibly patient. And they, they were all happy, they had a lovely time. Sort of thing that makes working a pleasure. Really was good. One member of the crew, however, did not find the chess match quite such a pleasure. Second unit continuity lady, Beryl Booth, who recalls her initial anxieties. Well, yes, I was terribly worried. I didn't know the first thing about chess anyway. And I knew there were going to be an awful lot of moves going on and that I was going to have a great deal of problem about where people were at any given moment when we started to cut and do cross-cutting and intercutting and with dialogue and where they should be. And I really practically had a nervous breakdown worrying beforehand about this and particularly since a lot of it was passed over to the second unit. But, uh, Pat apparently got to hear that I was worried and uh, laughed, laughed his head off really and said what on earth was I worrying about and there's nothing to worry about, but which eased it a bit. I felt well at least he's on my side <laughs> and uh, actually we got through it. It wasn't too bad but I did worry and uh, I don't think there were any disasters. I didn't hear about them. Nobody said no one from the cutting room said, whatever's gone wrong here. Well, it, it, it happens on a lot of films uh, that a second and third assistant will put on, the, uh, on a period film, mm -hmm. will actually put on the same costume that the crowd are wearing, and this enables them to get among the crowd, as in Port Marion, uh, would be among the crowd in costume, in long shot, and you could control the crowd from there. And it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. And there were several other occasions, mostly in uh, Port Mary, and it, it, it almost paid a dividend to be in costume each day. So that mm -hmm. if you were doing a fairly big crowd scene, and even in the middle of a scene, you could spot somebody among the crowd, perhaps getting a bit over-enthusiastic or whatever, or not walking in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And in the foreground might be dialogue between Patrick and somebody. So the alternative is to get the guy in the background to do the right thing would be to, you know, either cut and start again because you couldn't shout over the dialogue. But somebody like myself in costume, the first assistant would say, look, look at that guy in the background. He's staring at camera, stop him. And I could walk across as if a crowd myself mm. and just walk up to the guy and start chatting to him and take his attention away from looking at the camera. As well as helping with the crowd scenes, a second assistant director, John O'Connor, was also given a more specific part in the third episode, The Queen's Pawn. I do remember we were stuck one day for a very small speaking part. I, it was the episode where Patrick had suddenly worked out how to detect among all the villagers who were uh, genuine prisoners and who were on the side of the enemy, if you like. And his, his, his uh, way of detecting it was to go around and ask perfectly ordinary questions. And depending on the kind of responses got would be how he detected who was a goodie and who was a baddie. 
and he'd walk up to somebody and say, You paint this. And if they thought of it a little bit cowed and... If it's not satisfactory, yeah, I'll do it again. He knew they were a prisoner. And I seem to remember that I was a gardener, doing some gardening. And Patrick walks up to me, he's on a slightly lower level, if I recall. Excuse me. Yes? Like a word with you. Well, you'll have to wait. All right. Look at it. Got him. So I was immediately here marked as one of the baddies. <laughs> 